and welcome back from that one. Now, the central bank's decision to intervene in the forex market suggests it is now ready to provide a steady supply of forex in the official market, a situation that could strengthen the exchange rate at the black market. Well, I have the president of the Association of Small Business Owners, Asban, Dr. Femi Egbeshola, joining me now to discuss further. Good morning to you, Dr. Egbeshola. Thanks for joining us on Business Insights. Good morning, and thank you for having me. All right. Uh, when the CBN uh, imposed the ban in uh, 2015 of June, uh, it clarified that it was to conserve scarce foreign exchange and encourage domestic production, self-sufficiency, and export. But right now, do you think this move is what is needed with all that we have going on in the Forex regime? Uh, well, um, from our point of view, the policy has not really achieved its intended purpose because those products that are under ban, sorry, those products that are under ban for Forex are still everywhere in the markets. It means that um, the importers are still looking for the parallel market to source for foreign exchange to bring in these goods and uh, products. And that means that it's going to have more stress on the Naira. And that's why we have Naira depreciating every day to the point we have it today. Uh, but uh, more professionally, we will have expected that um, there should be what is called a policy impact assessment being uh, doled out to be able to actually decipher uh, the benefits or otherwise of that policy for the past eight years to date. That will have been able to give us a direct uh, approach to know if really the uh, policy has been impactful or not. But for CBN to come out in their wisdom to now make a U-turn with the policy, it's an indication that they have also realized that um, it has not really worked. To some of us, um, CBN should be more concentrated on monetary policies rather than fiscal policies. Um, putting a ban on 43 items to us is more of a fiscal policy issue as we left to the physical authorities to handle, not for CBN. But we are happy that eventually uh, uh, this ban is being lifted because we feel that it will reduce inflation at the end of the exercise. We also believe that um, it will also help to uh, improve uh, the, the Naira because the downward fall of the Naira now is unabated and something needs to be done in the immediate. Uh, beyond that, we also feel that um, the private sector feels that um, CBN now should be thinking more of uh, how to um, increase the, the availability of dollar in the market. There are more uh, innovative ways of making dollar more available in the market. There are so many ways to do, it, to, to, to do this and we want to CBN to concentrate more on that. Uh, we also feel that um, maybe one best way to go will have been um, uh, removing those items on the ban list uh, gradually. And the best way CBN can know what to lift now and what to leave for some time will have been a consultative engagement with the organized private sector, which did not happen before this uh, takes place. Okay. Speaking about the organized private sector, the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry also reacted to this and says um, that um, at the new FX policy of the CBN on banning the, the items that were excluded from accessing FX at the official market, well, they said it is um, a market-friendly step towards unifying exchange rates and is expected to curtail inflationary pressures in the short term. I don't know if you agree with that um, line of reasoning. Yes, um, yes, actually, it is expected to reduce inflation uh, in the short term. But um, be that as it may, we also must realize that we have stakeholders uh, in the economy of our country, and everybody should be uh, brought on board when critical policy decisions like this need to be taken. For example, uh, some companies, because of the ban, has uh, done some backward integration to look at how they can localize their input. In, instead of importing into the country because of the uh, former ban. And this has cost them a lot of time, money, energy, and resources. So coming up to now lift the ban without um, prior engagement may have a lot of stress on this company and put them at a loss at the end of the day, which may also re re result into job losses. So we, we think that um, when policies like this are to be made, there is need for governments, particularly agencies of government that are 
specifically in, 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 in that position to do such policies, to engage more with the private sector so that it, it will be a win-win solution and win-win situation at the end of the day. According to the central bank, uh, this action will boost liquidity in the Nigerian foreign exchange market. And it's saying that um, they are going to be intervening from time to time, stating that these interventions will decrease as our liquidity improves. Uh, how do we react? This means that the CBN will not be selling uh, FX once again, or just how? Well, um, it is expected to increase uh, liquidity if it is uh, annexed and uh, implemented the right way. Uh, it is a part of the world. We have wonderful policies in the past, but implement, monitoring and implementation has been one big challenge. And then um, when it comes to having a positive impact um, in terms of liquidity, uh, bringing the, 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 the official uh, market to the parallel market to be at par, a lot of things need still, be, still needs to be done. Um, if we still have corruption, it will be difficult for us to have a parallel exchange rate because those who are involved in corruption will not go to the bank for forex. They will still go to the parallel market. Those who are also involved with different kind of vices, maybe drug trafficking and the rest, will still rely on the, on the parallel market for their exchange. So CBN needs to go beyond just um, lifting ban on uh, the 43 items to see how they can creatively and innovatively uh, bring out possible solutions to be able to really um, hit the, the, the fall of the Naira at the tip. And this uh, needs to be done with quite a lot of engagement with stakeholders, like I have mentioned the other time. We are also uh, of the opinion that um, when it comes to these 43 items, some of them need outright banning, not just ban from Forex. We have some products that are on that list that are being manufactured locally here that we need not encourage to be brought to the market at all. For example, toothpicks. Why must we go to the to the bank to get forex or to CBN to get forex or bring in toothpicks to the country? Why must we go to the bank or to the forex market to bring in chicken or turkey to the country? This is, some of these things are to be on outright importation ban, not just forex ban. So there's a lot that needs to be done. There's still need for us to have more engagement on this issue so that we can have uh, a situation whereby everybody will own the policy, we see it as uh, a, a working solution, and we will be able to get it better so that inflation can be arrested, liquidity can improve, and then um, our issue with LC can also begin to work out. We have a lot of backlog of a letter of credit now because the dollar is not there. So all of this can only be addressed if we have a holistic solution by bringing everybody together on the table to talk about it. All right, you represent um, the small uh, business owners uh, in the country. Now, it's a good thing that you have mentioned um, some of this uh, uh, item that should not even be uh, be talked about in the first instance to speak a chicken even rice as it were but my question right now would be this policy uh the back and forth as it were what impact uh, you know does it have on the small and medium scale enterprises it's it's not that a negative impact it's not that a negative impact because um policies affect the more those at the bottom of the pyramid and this time the nano micro small and medium businesses they are more impacted because they have less power to 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 cushion the effects of some of the negativities of these policies uh like i did mention the other time because there was a ban some people have invested so much in making an alternative for example toothpicks we have some small business owners who are now producing toothpicks and are selling into the market now if the forest is opened up it means and there's no ban on the, the importation ban on the products it means that um, toothpicks will begin to add their flow into the country and begin to compete with the micro small businesses that are already doing this to speak you should know that the packaging but the packaging method and some of the other things inputted in some of these foreign products make it more attractive to our local consumers and that will have a negative impact on the local manufacturers who are already doing it and finding ways to improve day by day to be able to meet with international standards it means that if these people are affect, affected or impacted negatively we will continue to have more job losses and it will also mean that small businesses may continue to fizzle out as we're having at the moment research and statistics shows that um, we have lost about three million businesses in this last two years it may increase if nothing is done. And that's why some of us feel that, well, it's good as intervention is being mentioned. But when you mention intervention, it should not be just 
in the world intervention. We must know what it, it, it takes, how it is going to be, the kind of intervention that is coming, who are those that are going to benefit, and the other dynamics that is associated with this. That is when we can really know that, oh, that yes, if this intervention actually sees the light of the day, it will be able to arrest some of the challenges that this new policy will uh, uh, have on, on small and micro businesses. All right, it's a good thing, again, that you have mentioned um, the, the subject matter intervention. You know, people are wondering because it is unclear how much demand this new policy will drive to the official um, INE window. And do you really think the central bank has the capacity to meet this demand in the short term until liquidity returns, as it claimed? I really don't think so. I really don't think so. Our foreign reserve is, our foreign exchange reserve is being depleted by day. The country is already in debts. I really don't see the kind of intervention that is coming now uh, that can have a, a wholesale effect on the economy, particularly on the business sector. Uh, at the moment, um, we have quite a lot of interventions, even on ground, that are not yet said, uh, being impactful. One of it is the RT200 that CBL launched 2022, that's last year, that is expected to to add more value to importers so that they can do more exports, sorry, to exporters rather, so that they can do more export and bring in um, foreign exchange to the country. How many people have been able to access this fund? Is the terms and conditions for accessing the fund accessible to micro and small businesses? The answer is no. So that's why there is proper emphasis that should be placed on uh, engagement with stakeholders so that CBN itself can come to understand what really is the business climate from the point of the players and actors in that sector, not from what are theorized in the book or office. There is need to also make sure that the intervention gets to the right uh, beneficiaries of this intervention, not political, political sales, uh, business owners. These are facts that needs to be worked upon if we really want the intervention to be successful. The next question is, what is the extent of the intervention? Some of the intervention we have had in the past impacted maybe 2-3% of the, of the business sector. So if I have an intervention that is uh, expected to go around 40 million, 40 million entrepreneurs in the country at the moment, and we have it impacting just 500,000, what's the volume of 500,000 compared to 40 million entrepreneurs? These are some of the things we need to look at. And when you're talking about uh, intervention, it must be well spelled out. Those that are expected to benefit must know all the terms and conditions from having been issued. And they must be able to now prepare themselves to be able to take advantage of it. This, at the moment, we don't know. We don't know how the intervention is going to come, when it is going to come, the form it is going to take, and the rest of it. All right. Uh, also interesting is that uh, most supply you know, currently goes to the black market and will remain so if the exchange rate disparity remains above um, 5%. Uh, the CBN also has a forex backlog of around $8 billion and another $20 billion in swaps with Nigerian banks. How do you think all of this will really play out? I, 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 I'm just beginning to imagine, really. That, that's the more reason why uh, our Naira keeps falling, because uh, more people will now go to the parallel market to source for forex, and that's just too bad. Uh, as of today, particularly since February of this year, uh, foreign uh, investors and uh, foreign exporters to our country uh, has uh, re been rejecting our LC. They no longer have trust in CBN. They no longer have trust in our banks. They no longer have trust in Nigerian businesses because of the several backlogs of uh, LCs that were unattended to. And that means that everybody that has to now go to the bank will now shift it to the black market or the parallel market. The implication of that is that um, Naira will continue to fall because it is, a, it is just an issue of uh, uh, demand and supply. It's, that is simple economics. Naira will continue to fall. And when Naira keeps falling, it means that inflation will continue to rise. And that's what we have been experiencing for the past eight months now. Naira, the inflation is at its highest peak now. We have about 26% inflation rate in the country. And it means that um, uh, uh, the consumers will have less disposable income to even buy whatever they want to need be it consumer goods or services that they require, they have less capital, less fund to purchase it. And that also implies that the companies will sell less of what they have been selling before. When they sell less, it means they have to contrast their production process, reduce their staff, increase joblessness, and uh, the rest of it. When joblessness is there, those who are jobless must find a way to keep ends meet. One way of 
keeping ends with, is involving themselves in vices, in crime, in uh, cyber crime and the rest. And that's not good for economy. I'm tempted to just chip in one more question as we round off now, because uh, I'm thinking about uh, the CBN uh, lifting these items from you know, its band list now to the fact that uh, uh, some of these lifts, uh, uh, some of these items rather, are still on the customs band list. So how, what's the synchronization? I mean, how do we play out all of that? How do we even begin to understand if the CBN is saying that it is no longer part of uh, items on the list? And, it's, and those items are still on the customs and band list. And that's one of the challenges we have. They need to be a synergy between all arms of government, particularly when there are major policies like this. If you go to the market today, you see, see uh, imported vegetable oil that is expected to be under import ban. You see rice that is also expected to be under both imports and forex ban. You see many of these commodities. You now begin to ask yourself, how do they find their way into our, our shores? How did they enter our country? It means that there's a gap somewhere. Gap somewhere in our security system. Gap somewhere in our enforcement and, and monitoring system. And other gaps that can be identified. That's why we keep hammering on the fact that for things to work, every stakeholder must be brought to the table All to right. make policy from up in issue and see to its implementation. Right. We Thank, expect you, Dr. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm uh, out of time. I didn't mean to just uh, bought in there, but then uh, we do appreciate um, all of the useful inputs that you have brought, specifically the issue of uh, having a bit of um, synchronization between um, the regulators. We do appreciate your time once again. Dr. Femi Egbeshola is the president of Asbon Association of Small Business Owners of Nigeria. And that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for being there. <laughs>